Welcome. The Let's Play Rule the Waves 3 as Germany starting in 1935. It is 1947, it's January, this is episode 30, and we are in part two of a battle at the Western Approaches to Britain, featuring the great bulk of the German fleet, carrier and battle, and what seems to be the British battle fleet in home waters. I'm not at currently seeing many British carriers. If we pop over to the battle map, I've plotted what we can tell so far, which seems to be less than we could tell before, but what we could tell before may have been incorrect. So up here in the yellow is a set of merchant ships with some uh, escorting destroyers. And a lot of unidentified ships. I suspect most of those are merchant ships. Previously, a carrier or two and some light cruisers was reported, but I'm now suspicious as to whether that's really true. In the south, we have the British battle fleet with one, two, three, four, five British battleships or battle cruisers, a Centurion, a couple of Ansons, an Indefatigable, and an Invincible. The Invincible is probably not long for this world. There are three cruisers, a heavy cruiser and a couple of light cruisers, and a swirl of destroyers and some more unidentified ships around here. We've got a couple of torpedo bomber strikes coming in. So far, the planes haven't done a lot. Uh, other than, you know, when you're under plane attack, you have to put the helm over and you lose any kind of tactical formation uh, in terms of a gun line that you were doing. We are down here. And for my battle cruisers, I have a choice of either carrying on in this westerly direction to kind of come up behind the British fleet or turning to the north and making sure that the British fleet don't make any advance eastwards because towards the east, 50 miles or so away, is my carrier fleet. So I think on the whole, I'd like to keep my battle cruisers in between the battle fleet of Britain and my carrier force. So I think I'm going to go north. And that also would mean that I'm keeping in contact with my cruisers here, which I'm trying to take to interfere with the convoy and sink some ships. I think I've done some heavy damage on a number of British ships. It's hard to tell uh, because none have sunk so far, so I haven't achieved my objective. I also suspect that I'm starting to run out of main armament ammunition, despite the fact that the battle hasn't really been going on for too long, only 95 out of 800 uh, set for this battle. Just to remind you, the wind is from the east, so any carrier would have to turn east in order to do air operations. And the sea state is limited to 28 knots, but otherwise the range is 32,000 yards, which up in these northern waters is uh, really quite large, particularly for January. The dawn hasn't been terribly long in effect, and it should be fine. Oh, by the way, this comedy arrow uh, flag will sort itself out shortly. So that's what I am intending to do. Let us go north and I'm just going to put these destroyers onto IA for the moment, just to keep them in reserve. These cruisers, we are quite close. I mean, we're only 13,000 yards away from them and um, 16,000 yards away. So I'm going to tend to send them north, but I'm not going to send them this way so that they get closer. I'm going to send them that way. So, whoops. Like that, first of all. The Berlin and its friend, the Breslau. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, it's supposed to be in line ahead. Will hopefully sort itself out and we will head that north. Just you know, actually, the Centurion here says it's light damage. I think it's heavier damage than that is a concern. So I'm just going to bring these up a bit more north. And if I zoom in, this Derwent class, heavy damage on fire. Hopefully that's um, not going to be a problem, but I'm not going to get unnecessarily close to it. The Munich, uh, Munchen rather, is, I think, 
not long for this world. Oh, 67 damage. Well, I mean, let's bring it right down. Let's make it five. Continue to go out of the battle. The Stuttgart, poor old Stuttgart, is sinking. Uh, let's push it on. See how this goes. So, yeah, some of my destroyers are getting short of fuel. Poor old Stuttgart is taking a lot of fire, but that's fine because it's sinking already. So, yeah, we're firing on the Invincible. Not sure that's really the best target. We have high rate. Actually, we've got quite low rates. I am turning and what have you. So, not surprising. And then let's get this. Brenham, Brenham division going around and around. Yeah, there you go. I thought so. Now the Graf Spey has not very much ammunition. Not by design. It was a, if you remember, a legacy design I was stuck with. I wouldn't normally design ships with only 85 or 90 shells in the magazine. That's, that's never too clever. Okay, so that's brought the rune over in that direction. Um, just concerned with the centurion, as I said. Bring these round. Hopefully this, yeah, is not going to be a problem. Good hope. Bit of firing there. And so they're firing at some merchant ships, which is fine. They're all still piling into the uh, Invincible, so, and it's not huge, so I'm going to let other planes return, and they're already flying, so yeah, no new strikes. It is 8 o'clock in the morning. I've got a number of strikes coming in that are going to be arriving over the next couple of hours, I believe. Invincible down to 5 knots which I like very much. Just going to check on the speed of my battle cruisers. So yeah, they're all chugging along. Touch of damage. Craft Spay is the worst. But all of its turrets seem in action, which is fine. Under Tan is shooting at someone in long distance, and so are they. So there's only one of them that says is actually shooting at the Invincible with a nice healthy 6% 6, 6 hit rate. So, yes. Ah, so those guys are firing at the Indefatigable. Increase the speed a bit. We seem to be falling behind. Ooh, why are they so slow? So that does seem to be their maximum speed, which is odd. Someone being damaged. Look at its log. It's been hit by several 15-inch guns and a 10-inch. It's been hit in the engine room. The bridge has been destroyed. Uh, its rear turrets being destroyed. It's splinters started fires, although that's not being reported at the moment. And it had another critical hit, disabling electrical power, high speed flooding. That doesn't, doesn't sound good at all. I'm tempted to go to the order of battle. And actually, yeah, they've both taken quite a lot of hits. So I'm going to send them off out of the battle. Let's just check on the Berlins, because if I get rid of the Rune and the Blucher, the Berlins may also come under fire. So my ambitions for piling into the convoy are uh, a little bit moot at the moment. Let's get these to turn together. So here come in. Going, oh, so those are a pile of merchant ships. Feel another piece of plotting coming in and just seeing if we can sort out this force with any degree of greater confidence. So this is what we can see at the moment. So a pile of merchant ships up here, Centurion, Indefactible and Invincible. 
Uh, we've lost sight of the two Ansons, but I think that they are those two. And this pile of merchant ships, so that's like a nice little shooty up target to take on. Another pile here. These largely unprotected um, directly, but the Centurion is definitely driven off my Rune and my Blucher uh, and knocked them about a bit. So, yeah, here is uh, the Graf Spey coming up. So I'm going to definitely take that up north in a parallel course and probably send in some destroyers to, uh, to go through some of these. Excellent. So let's take this squadron of destroyers. Take them out of that. They are finishing off this Derwent class, but actually we want them to go through and target that lot. Not sure what to do with these. So when you're not sure, put them on IA control and let the computer sort it out a little bit. Uh, continuing with the Berlins and Rune and the Blucher. Put them out of harm's way. So Sea State Limits float plane operations has just popped up. Let's just see if the... Ah, right. So the weather has significantly worsened, and we're now down to 22 knots. That's going to be heavy weather for um, some of the damaged ships, unfortunately going to potentially make it difficult for some of the destroyers to come in and do some of the more exciting actions. Maybe it might make it easier for the uh, planes to hit their targets if the targets are moving more slowly. So here come in some dive bombers uh, to dive bomb an unidentified ship, which responds 70 AA. They destroyed an aircraft. No bomb hits. It's, um, yeah. I don't know why, you know, these are expert and veteran pilots, and I have pilot expertise as a doctrine. They are they're not performing well. There is, I noticed up here, a uh, glare, and so that will be a negative modifier on accuracy. But the glare, would, the sun rises in the east, so looking into the east would, you'd think, actually be worse for the British, but anyhow. Another five attack, 36 factors, no hits seemingly uh, done. Some enemy dive bombers have a pop at the Königsberg, which is just down there, and seem to miss, which is great. The Graf Spey is having fun with the Invincible, as is the Von der Tan, whilst the Reichsgraf is having a go at the Indefatigable. Don't know why the Blucher is unnecessarily explode um, unless it's had some nasty critical hits itself. Wow, it's just taken an absolute pummeling in the last few minutes. Yeah, ouch. So that might not go well at all. Definitely detach them as well if that encourages them to leave the scene before they are completely sunk. Yeah. Ammunition is still proving to be a problem. Enemy dive bombers are still having a go at the light cruisers. Kind of good. I mean, I'd much prefer them to have a go at the light cruisers than at um, the battle cruisers. I'm just going to go to uh, come out. Go into these chaps and just check that we are still happy. Definitely thought I said provide cap to the battle cruisers. I think we'll double that up. I wonder being a bit exposed to enemy air attack. We dive bomb, no bomb hits. 
No bomb hits. What what actually is going on here? Okay, so this invincible has stopped, which is great. We've got the destroyers coming in to have a go at these merchant ships slowly. And, oh, now the float plane restriction has been lifted. So let's just look at the speed. So the speed's gone back up to 27 knots. So that's handy. The Rune and the Blucha are hopefully making their battered escape. And we are having a go at the Centurion. Seems reasonably reasonable enough. Uh, so my gun arcs are good enough. I'm going to straighten up course because we were at 15,500. If they can all teach the uh, Centurion a lesson, I would be very happy. I'm going to move these light cruisers towards merchant ships as well and see if we can do something with that. So here's some more coming in. Change the course of that ever so slightly. The cat seems to be tangling quite successfully with our blossom booms. Still only light damage, apparently, on the Centurion. Oh dear, enemy aircraft approaching our carriers. Don't like the sound of that at all. Transport hit by a torpedo? Well, I suppose if it was a destroyer torpedo or something, I mean, that's fine. So the Rags Graf gets in a 9 15 inch broadside against the Centurion and scores three hits. Well done. And the Vondertam chips in with a fourth hit, which is excellent. The Ansons are firing at us now. So there's one Anson, there's a second Anson, and there's an Indefectible. So all of the four remaining heavy ships are round about there. I know the Invisible hasn't sunk, but I don't think it's taking part anymore. There is some attempts to torpedo an unidentified ship and some fighting against the Gladiator fighters, which um, produces some damage on both sides. And invincible hit by a torpedo and another torpedo. The Centurion still only has light damage. I don't believe it. Uh, it took another hit this time from the uh, Stauffenburg. And a light cruiser has been hit. Now the range here is under 10,000, which is shocking. Um, uh, the Good Hope's got some heavy damage, which is nice. The Good Hope actually has been pretty handy itself, so I'm glad to see that. Here come in some more torpedo bombers. Good hopes, so it's like a 10 inch gun or something like that, I would imagine. 20% damage, how are we doing? Let's just have a little look at the log. Engine, okay. Hit on current top of X, but it didn't do anything. So nice try, good hope, but no banana. I'm going to straighten up the Bremens because the battle seems to be coming towards us. They're all still firing at the Centurion. Its damage is still light despite a Another hit from the Graf Spey, and from the Stauffenburg, and from the Reichsgraf, and from the Vondertan, who hit twice. So one, two, three, four, five heavy caliber hits. Ouchie. The destroyers are probably going to have to shy off. 
because the battle is coming their way. And uh, Reichsgraf's X turret is disabled. So they do land something. That's from an Anson. We're still plowing into this Centurion with its mythical light damage. Invincible hit by a torpedo again? Where from? I mean, here is the Invincible. Miles away. Unless these guys are flying at it, but I'm not getting any reports from that. Just going to check on the ammunition status. So, yes, yeah, getting pretty low. Pretty low. So, yep, they can still keep on torpedoing the Invincible. I mean, fair play to the Invincible. It will not die. Like some Frankenstein. Do these have any torpedoes left? No, they don't. So let's pile them out. Let's get them to turn. And uh, yeah, they're, they're not doing anything useful there. And I think equally them. Actually, let's get them to make smoke. I always forget about making smoke. Let's uh, take them under a, a control. Get them to make smoke. And yeah, let's make smoke here. You're not going to make smoke there. I still want some remaining gunnery, but as you can see, they're going over the top of the British. There's some torpedoes in the water. Hooray. Shame it's against the merchants rather than the centurion. But maybe these dive bombers will sort something out. Or maybe not. Yeah, I think I'm basically breaking off the surface engagement part of the battle. Ammunition down to 25%, highest is 38%. That's good for, you know, uh, another round if we need to have another round. But I don't think that I want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe. now, of course, because I'm running low on ammunition. Likelihood is they're running low on ammunition as well. Okay, so let's just run this for a couple more minutes. Random small ships getting torpedoed. Let's just ignore the five battleships, will we? And a light cruiser hit. Yeah. Much damage, but not entirely sure it amounts to anything. Let's just see. Yep, unidentified ships hit by bombs. Like the least helpful intelligence message ever. Okay. I think I'm going to pause it just now. I'm sort of disengaging at this moment from the surface action. I need to wait until stuff has returned so quite a bit has returned so that's good and reorganize my carriers and probably conduct a more long distance set of carrier attacks in the third part of this extended battle thanks very much for watching see you next time